everybody, my name is Felix. I'm uh, from Quorum team. I work for JP Morgan. Uh, so we have a ton of JP Morgan folks here, which is a big plus. And uh, I'm here to talk about the enterprise permissions models that we've recently uh, been trying to add into, uh, into Quorum. So uh, welcome, as I said. And uh, there's a little bit about me. Uh, this is a little presentation, so my name is not presenter's name. But uh, anyways, I did work in Ghostry for a little while. So Ghostry is a very, it's a pretty famous privacy company. So I worked in uh, on their main product for about four years. And I've uh, started in JP Morgan about, uh, well, the year here is wrong, but I started uh, started about four years ago, actually 2014. Uh, so so I'm, I am, uh, you know, my job is that, uh, I'm the developer advocate and one of the tech leads on Quorum project. Quorum itself being uh, the uh, open source blockchain implementation uh, by JP Morgan. And I'll talk about details of it in a second. The agenda is pretty straightforward. Uh, we're go I'm going to cover what is Quorum and explain how we're using this at JP Morgan. And then we'll talk about the permissions models that uh, we are introducing into the product. So first of all, uh, you know, what is Quorum? Quorum is a uh, fork of Go Ethereum was the main client for uh, Ethereum protocol. Uh, what we did is we took uh, we took the, pro the protocol and the client, we forked it and we added features that are really more important in the enterprise context and not and not really that useful in the public context. So these uh, these features are permissioning, uh, you know, I'm calling them here specific challenges, but it's permissioning, privacy, uh, speed and throughput of the entire system. And that's uh, this is a product backed by JP Morgan. So we're, uh, you know, me and all of the other people working on Quorum are actually JP Morgan employees. Uh, so the key features or, you know, the reasons why, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why uh, a company such as JP Morgan would not be using a public uh, public mainnet of Ethereum or Bitcoin. The biggest reasons is that it's slow. We'd like to ensure that there's security and that uh, there is no data leak information. There's tons of regulations we have to follow. So all of the stuff is uh, reasons why we would be doing this separately. And uh, so the second point is why did we pick Ethereum? So the, the Quorum team or blockchain team inside the JP Morgan has been reviewing the implementations for a little while of different uh, of different blockchains that are available, and you know at the times that we've been looking at it, which is almost three years ago, we really liked what Ethereum had to offer already at that time, and we went all in on Ethereum implementation. So the, these are you know we like the community factor of it, so how big and how many people are working on it. And uh, we do know, even three years ago, we already knew that it was proven because uh, mainnet launched. Uh, it was still Homestead, but it worked just fine. And that uh, that was a big plus that we were looking at. Uh, the actual features or the core features of Quorum client versus Ethereum would be privacy, performance, uh, finality, and permissioning. They're mostly self-explanatory things, but uh, the things that you can do in Quorum is uh, is very different than what you do in the permissioned, uh, non-permissioned implementation of Ethereum, right? Uh, so in terms of privacy, we have two levels of privacy. We obviously support zero knowledge layer uh, through ZSL implementation. And, uh, through ZSL implementation and uh, now we offer another new layer called Anonymous Z-Eater, Z which is based on the, on the research for Z-Eater. Z, Z and uh, the more traditional privacy layers that we offer is uh, is a layer where uh, each node has private uh, private transaction managers, so each node becomes uh, can speak privately with any other node. Meaning that uh, participant A could send a private mes message to participant B, and participant C, who was not part of the party to this communication, would not know the payload. That's the privacy model offered by Quorum. In terms of performance, uh, you know we. We're not running on mainnet, and so we do not need the POW-based consensus algorithm. What we do is, uh, uh, what we, we replace it with a set of different consensus mechanisms that you can pick from when you set up, uh, when you configure and set up your core blockchain. These consensus mechanisms are much higher and much faster uh, than a POW mechanism. One of them is a BFT-tolerant uh, BFT tolerant consensus uh, algorithm. The other one is Raft. Uh, Raft is network optimized for speed, and the uh, uh, BFT algorithms that we have called, is called Istanbul. It's also both of them offer very high uh, TPS rate, so 
you know, you could do anywhere between a thousand, upwards of a thousand transactions per second. And we also have, a, so, so there's Ethereum based, there are blocks, and the blocks, uh, we also minimize the block time, which is 50 milliseconds in Raft, and uh, in Istanbul it's up, uh, so, sorry, it's down to one uh, second intervals. Uh, the other two things are also very important. So finality is uh, the idea is that every transaction and every block that we tell you has been created is final. There is no forking. You can't go back and say, okay, this, uh, no, there is no forking at all, meaning that the chain either advances or it doesn't. And if it doesn't advance, you no longer have the consensus, uh, consensus going forward, but at least it will never lie or never go back and tell you that, okay, well, we told you the transaction is block one, but it actually is now in block five, or it got unrolled. This is not possible in Quorum versus uh, how it is configured in Ethereum. Finally, we have permissioning. So permissioning is pretty straightforward. If when you're in the, when you're in that enterprise uh, configuration, you kind of have to know every uh, every other person on the network. So this is a concept of being able to figure figure out and configure who is supposed to participate in, the, in your blockchain and who's supposed to be using it. So that's uh, that's permissioning for us. And in fact, I will go into some details for this model uh, that we have in a few minutes. Uh, so high level design, you know, this is what uh, Coral blockchain would look like. So in yellow, you see the Coral blockchain itself. That would be a blockchain that consists of many nodes. Uh, the nodes themselves is a is a duo of software that we run, which is Quorum node. That's a modified Go Ethereum uh, client. And each node is likely to be running with a private transaction manager. For us, that would be a tester or constellation. And the idea is that the private transaction manager is a layer or software that provides privacy for the corresponding Quorum nodes that it uh, speaks to. And uh, the biggest idea of Quorum is that it's, uh, it's just Ethereum. So if you're a, a person that, d that develops on Ethereum and you're familiar with Solidity, you're familiar with all of the tools, you change nothing. Everything works out of the box f for you in Quorum. And uh, you know, the, the idea is that you don't need to learn anything, any of the tools you already like, you know, Truffle, Remix, MetaMask, OpenZeppelin, and all of them work out of the box with Quorum. And we think that's... Uh, that's the power of Quorum, right? So you don't need to learn anything, but in the enterprise context of consortium blockchain where you set it up, you can still use Ethereum, it's called Quorum, but uh, everything else is the same. Okay, so that was Quorum, uh, and uh, now I'm gonna talk about the permission model. So the permission, mo permission model and requirements are very, pretty straightforward. Again, whenever you work in a bigger company, there is always going to be layers of uh, layers of corporate stuff on you. You would be in one department, you would be on one side of things, you'd be in some particular sub-business, and so on. So enterprise uh, system requirements are very well understood at this point. There are obviously really good solutions already out there for companies, but there is no good mapping of those things onto Ethereum. So that, that's exactly what we created. Uh, in terms of the uh, requirements, again, as I said, they are straightforward, but uh, they need to be mapped well on the blockchain as well. Right? So you ha they're almost always hi hierarchical. So you have a, you know, you have a management sy system where you have a person that will be managing some other people that may manage some more people. So the, that's what that organization looks like. There's great mapping so already. As I said, uh, LDAP is one of the better implementations out there for enterprise uh, permissions, and Active Directory is also another one that's very well uh, known and. I think is used in practically every bigger company. As I said, there's a hierarchies, hier hierarchies going on into the corporate uh, split as well. So you have a different interactions with different groups. You have, let's say, marketing, you have sales. They would, be, they would all roll up at different people. And they would also usually map to different permissions that you would have on your, uh, on your permission systems and so on. The, you know, the, the, idea is, the idea is that enterprise permission systems are well understood. And there is no mapping of that on enterprise world that we have that we are aware of. So we created one. Uh, so current permission system. Th this is what it uh, li this is what it looks like. It's very. You know, I keep repeating the same things, but that that's what it is. There's not much to it. You create organizations. Organizations may have sub organizations. Each level will have some admi administrators. Uh, and other roles that you are up to, you know, configure and define yourself. And finally, it maps into Ethereum accounts. That's the important part. 
on the outer layer, the only the only additional benefit we add is that you can have a it's an it's a dynamic system. So whenever you spring up a new node uh, for Quorum, you basically would use this APIs to add it instead of what it was before, which was a manual I don't know, configuration of files. So that, that's the only big uh, difference that we've uh, added. But again, this is all now mapped into the client versus not. It hasn't, hasn't been there before. We do offer, uh, because it's a smart contract uh, driven system, there is a sm global smart contract that's uh, accessible to every participant of the blockchain. And uh, some of these participants can write into it, again, depending on their roles in there. And uh, that's how it works. So each one offers API. Each one could be used as smart contract itself. Uh, you know, it's, it's very not too dissimilar from uh, is owner or sender uh, checks. But uh, those things are available to you. Plus, there is a very rich API that you could use in your DAP for just permissioning. Finally, we you know, it's not just smart contract itself. We did create uh, our own uh, we, we did create our own uh, UI for it as well, but it's very light, and I'll show you this in the demo part of the thing, which is exactly what I'm going to do right now. So essentially, our demo and our current configuration is based on uh, uh, is based on the Quorum example. So Quorum examples is basically a very easy way for. Uh, users of Quorum to deploy a full network, and it basically highlights a lot of the things that Quorum offers. And that's the that's idea of why we put everything inside Quorum examples. So the permissioning system is also inside Quorum examples. Uh, none of the stuff is actually in master yet, but everything is already on GitHub on different pools. So you, you'll be able to see it, and I'll show you some of the stuff. So I pre-configured Quorum examples here. Reason being is that Quorum examples is a little slow to start, so I didn't want to spend a few minutes just uh, creating and recreating my Vagrant environment. And so I'll, I'll just show you a writing system and the UI of how it's done. Plus I'll show you the startup scripts that everybody else should run to get the system set up. Uh, so the first thing is, uh, again, my network is already configured. I have seven nodes running inside my Vagrant environment. I'm attaching to the first node. Uh, so the first thing I wanted to show is a rich set of the APIs that we added. And the APIs are called quorum permissions. So. There's many of them, uh, they are wired into the client, and the client itself is wired onto the blockchain, so this represents the current state of the smart contract uh, permissioning system on the chain. Uh, that, so that's, that's basically the essential idea of how it works. All seven nodes are permissioned here, plus some of the organizations are permissioned here. It is, uh, because it's an API, it's a little annoying to look at the API and co call the API, uh, APIs directly. So this is why we're also planning to offer a UI that basically does this. And that, that's the next thing that I'll show you. Uh, the, the UI is going to be called, uh, unsurprisingly, permissions UI. And uh, <laughs> basically visualizes the API calls. And uh, that's what you're looking at right now. Uh, so you have to provide a local node, a local uh, blockchain that you're connected to. So I'm running it local in Vagrant. The port that we generally uh, attach this on is 22,000. And you also have to provide an Ethereum account. Uh, OK, so the Ethereum account is one of the permissioned accounts. So if I, if I tried, uh, I'll, I can show this later, but I, if I were to create a new account that's not permissioned, you will actually be unable to connect to the node. So you kind of have to know in advance which accounts are permission. And uh, so the process of configuration, this initially is simplified. So we have a, we have a, uh, a file for uh, everybody to run, and it will generate the permission configuration. So once you connect, again, this is really just a simple UI to demonstrate what permission is happening and how it's configured right now. I have a single, uh, I mean, network is a top level. I have a single organization called Network, network Admins. And if, uh, 
you can uh, click on it and, it'll, and it will show you sub organizations. So I have a single sub organization called Suborg One. And uh, when you click uh, further, this is where you get an, any and all of the details. So this would be a list of permissioned accounts, permission nodes, and so on. Uh, and uh, on the left over here, you see the API calls that you can actually, again, execute from the UI. But uh, they map to an API that's uh, available inside the, uh, inside the uh, client. Perfect. Much, much better. So just to show you a few things, so let's say I want to add a new sub-organization. The format should be familiar to people who, who do the, uh, who do LDAP and Active Directory type of stuff right now, but, uh, you know, parent uh, sub-org will be net admins. The format is a little different, so okay. I need to take a look what's happening here, but essentially, again, this is a visualization tool. Uh, all of these are API calls into the uh, into the RPC methods that we added. This is well documented. Currently, everything is sitting on uh, on separate branches, but this is going to be in the master sometime this month. So, uh, pool seven one five is smart contract based permissions model. So, this is this is what I'm showing you right now. Finally, uh, what I wanted to show is that uh, for quorum examples, we added. Uh, Startup scripts that uh, kind of really handle and uh, expedite the deployment and configuration for it. So first of all, everything works off a file called permission config. So I'll, I'll show you a single file uh, for your reference. But this provides a, this provides the initial configurations that's needed for every node. And so without this, this uh, you would be unable to start permission uh, configuration. Basically, it will say, if you gave a hint to the uh, clients that I want to run in permission node, but you didn't provide this file, it will basically error out and tell you that, OK, well, you kind of first need to generate it for me to know who to connect to and which accounts I'm allowed to use and so on. Uh, this is what the file looks like. It's a pretty straightforward JSON file. Uh, again, the only thing is it's nothing straightforward to when you're generating it yourself. So we did provide a, a, a file called star permission, and this will generate and help you understand how this is done. Again, it's not a very trivial thing to do uh, to do all the time, but to be fair, something like permissions you would configure once, and that's that's it. So that, that's the demo. Uh, so JP Morgan Quorum uh, Boost. We have a whole bunch of JP Morgan people here, so you should feel free to come by and ask us questions. And uh, we're also hiring right here in the JP Morgan Hertzlia Her office. And uh, if you're looking for a job, come by. And uh, yeah, this is how you can find us, right? So we have a, we run a, the big, we run a Slack community. So this is uh, probably the best place to find us. Uh, we have our own website called Go Quorum website, and uh, GitHub is where you will find all of our source source code. Thanks, everybody.